Hello Internet. Uh, this video is first and foremost uh, another reassurance that I am in fact alive. Um, I'm doing fine. I haven't been updating much because there's not a lot to talk about and I've just been busy with the holidays and work and a bunch of other stuff. So uh, I am sorry that I'm not as regular as usual with my videos, but there hasn't been a whole lot to talk about. A couple things that have happened recently. I've mentioned before on my channel that my job is uh, at a group home for the handicapped. And part of my job is to be an advocate for one of the individuals living there. Uh, this is a blind man in his 50s. Uh, and I've been helping him achieve various goals that he set for himself. One of the things that he loves is Scottish and Irish uh, culture. Uh, that is his heritage. And so he's very interested in learning about that. He also loves the music and he loves to play the music. He, uh, he can play the piano. I've always loved uh, the tin whistle, which is a traditional Irish uh, instrument. And it's uh, very easy to learn how to play that. I mentioned this to his mother, uh, who is very active in his life. And um, she got us both uh, tin whistles to play and practice with. And I'm slowly teaching myself how to play, and then I'm passing that on to him. Uh, so he's learning to play with me. I'm having a lot of fun with that, actually. Uh, I, After just a couple of days of practice, I've actually gotten pretty decent with a couple of songs. I might record myself doing that at some point in a later date. Uh, his mother is actually rather enamored with me. Uh, she likes how I'm working with him. She appreciates what I'm doing. Uh, and how hard I'm working with him to do various things. He mentioned that they have a trip planned uh, in the spring to go to Scotland and Ireland, and uh, they are allowed to request a staff to go with them, and she, request, she requested me. Uh, he also agreed uh, that that was what they wanted. Uh, so it is entirely likely that I am going to Ireland and Scotland in the spring uh, as a part of my job. My, uh, my job won't just pay my way, they'll also pay me to do it. So that's, uh, that's kind of amazing. I discussed this with my father, who also who wants to take me to uh, Europe in the spring. Uh, one of the places we know that we want to go to is London, and so I mentioned the possibility of kind of piggybacking, where uh, I go with uh, my um, uh, individual and his mother to Scotland and Ireland, and then I just meet him in London, and then we continue uh, in Europe uh, with our vacation. It all depends on timing. It also depends on uh, when I'm getting my uh, radiation therapy done and whether or not I can. Uh, I might be radioactive during that time and I wouldn't be able to go, so we'll see. Let's see what else. Uh, oh, I went to see Star Wars, the new Star Wars movie, and uh, I absolutely loved it. Um, I do want to talk about that a little bit, so what I'm going to do is keep it spoiler free. And then at the end of this video, I'm going to include a spoiler section. So if you have seen the movie, you can watch that. If not, uh, you may, may want to skip that. I will put a very obvious spoiler warning on the screen uh, so that you know when I'm talking about spoilers. Uh, what can I say about this movie? Uh, it was fun. It was action-packed. It, uh, it was new. They, they did a lot of new things. Uh, which I was hoping that they would do. Uh, a lot of people were worried that this movie was going to be some retread of The Empire Strikes Back uh, because people felt that uh, The Force Awakens was uh, too much of a retread of A New Hope. I disagree, but, you know, whatever. Uh, but yeah, this was not a retread of The Empire Strikes Back. This was its own thing, uh, and they gave us something uh, brand new to, to deal with, uh, a problem for them to, for the heroes to overcome, many problems, as a matter of fact. And it was so well written and so surprisingly convoluted. I managed to pack in a lot into this movie. Uh, it's a long movie. I mean, I was in that theater for almost three hours, I was actually getting kind of um, impatient towards the end. Uh, like, there were a couple of times where I thought, okay, this is this is where it's going to end, and it, that wasn't where it ended, and it kept going. Uh, kind of like with the um, Lord of the Rings movies, where the last movie had like three or four endings to it, and uh, you, you kind of get a little bit impatient with it. It's like, oh my god, come on already. 
I got a little bit impatient with this movie too. I still love it. It was just like, at a certain point, it felt a little overlong. I managed to put in a lot of character development for uh, for the the new three main heroes of Ray, Poe, and Finn. And they also introduced uh, a few more characters that were uh, really good. Um, and uh, I'll talk about them in a little bit here, but I'm just really impressed that they managed to give us something that was definitely new, and it definitely separated itself from the, from the previous movies. It um, definitely intentionally was designed to let us know that this is not the old movies anymore. This is something new. We are venturing out on our own. We are doing something completely different, uh, and we're leaving the past behind. Not in a disrespectful way, and I think that's that's very important. Uh, they did this with a lot of respect to the previous movies, and they closed that 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 book of Star Wars. They closed that book and said, "Okay, this is good, and this is this is what we love, but it's time to close that and and move into something new." It's definitely not, you know, the the Luke Leia Han story anymore it's not about them anymore it's about these new characters and there's definitely this this feeling of a passing of a torch uh in this movie and going forward it's it's definitely not going to be uh as closely connected to the previous movies and i think that's good i think it's important for it to be its own thing now they can't ride on nostalgia anymore they can't ride on the curt tales of uh, of these great legends and they use that uh, word in the movie uh, several times to refer to the uh, the other characters the uh, Luke Lay and Han and they very clearly spell it out for you that this is this is just not their story anymore and them being treated as legends uh, perhaps overlooks a few important things about them and I really loved, I have to say, again, no spoilers here, but Luke's character arc in this movie was so well done. He definitely changed over the course of this movie for the better. And it was so good to see him go from, uh, at the start of the movie, uh, being in a bad place and working through that. And even at his advanced age and even... As a, as a Jedi Master, he still had lessons to learn. And he learned those lessons, and it just came together so well. Uh, and interwoven with that was Rey's character arc and her uh, uh, progress through learning the ways of the Force and the ways of the Jedi. And, uh, and that was so well handled and you know just so well written. And there were just so many parts to that where uh, it really was a matter of uh, changing of perspective and uh, deepening of, of her story as she realizes that a lot of what she understands is wrong. I loved the interaction between Ray and Luke, and uh, <laughs> a lot of it was very funny, but a lot of it was very meaningful and oftentimes a little touching. And then her interaction with Kylo Ren uh, was very well done. Uh, his parts and her parts and just like the way that they they talk to each other and interact and they interact a lot in this a lot, a lot more than I thought they would and a lot of of what they do and what they say to each other I mean it just like it was such a, a wonderful way to deepen their characters by having their relationship deepen and just go in a direction that I don't think anybody really expected and it was just oh man it was so good it was so well done Oh Dameron, oh my God, he is like he's great in this movie. He's first of all hilarious. Uh, the the opening scene, uh, again, no spoilers, but the opening scene is one of the funniest things. I, I I absolutely loved that part. It was so good. It made me relax. I was tense going into the movie because I just had this worry, this overwhelming worry that it was just it wasn't going to be good and it wasn't going to live up to people's expectations. And that scene was just such a great tension breaker. I wonder if they even knew in advance that that was how people were going to go into the movie. And so they intentionally had that opening scene be light and humorous to 
help us overcome our tension and it certainly worked for me and from that from that point on it was just it went into this fantastic opening battle scene that uh that was both exciting and fun but also really kind of heartbreaking and then it just and then it just goes from there and this this movie had so many scenes that were just they were so exciting but on on the tale of that was so heartbreaking and so powerful and i'll talk about a lot of that in the, in the spoiler section but oh man it, it just had so much to it that was just oh you know <laughs> uh like fist pumping excitement where you just want to go yeah but then it's like oh man you know it costs there's cost in this and i loved that like it really showed you that you can't have a lot of victory without a lot of cost high victory high cost high risk it was very well balanced for that um, leia oh man leia was just so wonderful in this and it's it's sad that this is the last time we're going to have Carrie Fisher. I don't know what they're going to do for the next movie because I, I'm getting into potential spoiler section here, so I'm, I'm going to hold off on that. But I don't know what they're going to do with the next movie because Carrie Fisher's gone. And I don't want them to do something like a CG Leia that would just be weird and you know rogue one territory in, in in the sense of like uncanny valley and i also feel it would be a little disrespectful to carrie fisher i don't know i don't know what they're going to do but leia's scenes in this movie there's a couple of moments that just made me so happy i mean that just let me know that they really knew what they were doing with this character and she does she does stuff that i didn't expect she was going to do and it was just, it was fantastic. I loved it. I love her. The villains are great. Uh, Snoke was great. Uh, you know, he definitely filled that sort of role, that that mirrored role of, of evil overlord, similar to Emperor Palpatine. But he was definitely his own villain. He separated himself from that template uh, in a couple of ways. I'll talk more about him in the spoiler section as well, because there's a few things that I didn't like but uh that's spoilers and hux uh general hux uh he was both funny and terrifying uh he was um uh one of those leaders that you just kind of like roll your eyes at but at the same time you recognize that he's got a lot of power and he knows how to use it he's he's kind of stupid kind of silly but a threat a serious threat and i really like that uh, the locations they go to are fantastic. Uh, lots of little background details that kind of make the world feel alive. Little details that were like, here's the thing, here's the thing. And it just kind of helped develop the world more. Uh, I just, I fucking loved it. It was so much fun and I, I want to see it again. After it was over, I immediately wanted to see it again. Um, not right away, because like I said, it was long and... For some reason, it was really hot in the theater. I mean, I was wearing my winter coat, and I was starting to get hot. So in the middle of the movie, I took it off, but I was still hot. And so I was kind of sweating towards the end. So I wanted to get out of there. I think it was just because there were just so many people, because that, that theater was entirely packed. There were no empty seats. I mean, of course, Star Wars, of course, is packed. But I definitely want to see this movie again, and I feel like I'm going to notice more stuff that I didn't notice before. <clears throat> Sorry, I've got a bit of a frog in my throat. Um, I don't know if maybe if I'm coming down with something. I think that's kind of it that I can talk about with this movie. Uh, and I, I'm not, I'm not somebody who wants to do a lot of movie reviews. I tried that in the past with a different channel. I'm not going to talk about that. <laughs> that was kind of embarrassing. Um, and I just, I don't really want to be an internet YouTube movie reviewer. But I just really wanted to talk about this movie. Uh, and everybody that I've been talking to about it hasn't seen it yet. Like all of my friends and the co-workers that like Star Wars, they haven't seen it yet because they've been busy with work and, and holidays and other stuff. Uh, so it's like, it's frustrating because it's like, I want to talk about this movie, but nobody has seen it. So I can't talk about it. And it's like, what do I do? So I like, you know, I'm like, all right, I'll make a, I'll make a YouTube video about it so I can at least get it off my chest. I can at least get my words out about this movie. 
I'm not going to make a habit of, of making uh, movie reviews, but I just I really needed to talk about this. But uh, okay, so that's it for this video. Uh, and now I'm going to get into spoilers. So here comes the spoiler warning. Boop. And uh, yeah, this is from now on, this is going to be me talking about uh, spoilers. So if you haven't seen the movie and you don't want to be spoiled, don't watch the rest of this. Don't complain to me if I if I spoil it for you. All right, three, two, one, go. Oh my God, I can't believe that Ray was Luke's daughter. <laughs> Obviously, I'm kidding. Uh, if if you if you've seen the movie, then you know I'm kidding. Okay, I'm gonna go a little bit chronologically. The opening scene with uh, Poe. Uh, ragging on on Hux and playing with him, it was hilarious. I loved that. It was just like classic Poe. I love it. You know, like that in retrospect, like people are gonna look back on that and be like, "That's classic Poe." You know, that and it was just funny. You know, and it just worked for me. A lot of the comedic beats in this were really spot on. I'll talk about the uh, the failings of this maybe towards the end. I'm, I'll try to lump all of my little nitpicks and my the problems that I have with this movie at the end because this is a flawed movie. I recognize that fact. I'm not a blind, uh, avid Star Wars fan. I know, I know that this is a flawed movie. I will talk about those flaws. But uh, but yeah, the the comedic beats in this, a lot of them are just spot on perfect, and I love it. Uh, Ray's part with Luke and their interaction, uh, like I said before. Is just really well done. Uh, I kind I kind of did expect almost traditional uh, dichotomy of uh, a willing student and an unwilling master. Uh, you see it a lot. You see it in uh, kung fu movies. The most recent example I can think of is, is the Doctor Strange movie, where um, spoilers for Doctor Strange, uh, and he goes to see the Ancient One, and she's not willing to teach him because he's arrogant and uh, and he sits on the doorstep until they let him in and it's like that's that's pretty standard you know and uh i don't i don't fault them for going that direction with that she goes to him looking for answers uh for training and he doesn't want to and she ends up sitting on his doorstep and waiting for him just waiting him out until he, he eventually decides that he is going to at least train her a little bit and i loved that, that slow change in luke uh and by the way mark hamill can fucking act I mean, I, his acting in the original trilogy was always pretty good. He de definitely got, you know, a good character arc in the version of trilogy. Um, and I, I kind of like that he went from a whiny teenage farm boy to this almost stoic Jedi master uh, with, you know, a high level of confidence. But I also like that that high level of confidence was undeserved because at the end of the, of the third movie in the original trilogy... He got his ass handed to him. He kicked uh, Vader's ass a bit, uh, but then, you know, Emperor Palpatine comes up and it's like, no, boy, you're still a kid and I can kick your ass and, and proved it. And, and I really like that they put him through an even more intense character arc in this movie. And it's all in one movie. You know, they didn't put it in, you know, over the course of three movies. In this one movie, he goes from this uh, dated old man who is just done with the force done with being a jedi he says it he went to that island to die he doesn't care he has closed himself off from the force and he goes from that to realizing that he can't be that he has to go back at least once more and he has to push himself through it and i love that i love the way it was handled i said like i said before uh luke's interaction with ray a lot of it was very funny uh, but a lot of it was just a great interplay and how, uh, how he was, he went from being like afraid of her to fully respecting her and her, where she went from being like this doe eyed kind of an idiot when it comes to the force, uh, to, you know, somebody who, who at least at the very least realizes that she has a lot to learn and is willing to learn it. And, uh, and you know, she has her own brush with the dark side. And her own temptation. I loved how that happened. And I just, I, I'm a little bit confused by it. Her being drawn into that hole under the island. And uh, and how it ends up being a mirror. And I like that. And I like how it's like, how it turns her expectations back on her. 
uh, of like, okay, I'm going to get answers. And the answer is herself. Like, it's supposed to be a place of, of darkness. That, that Like, that's where, you know, some of the dark side resides or something. Uh, kind of like the uh, tree cave thing in um, Empire Strikes Back, where uh, on Dagobah, uh, Luke, he feels something calling to him, and Yoda says, don't go to it, there's darkness there, and uh, he goes anyway, and he, he, he ends up uh, fighting a, a version of, of uh, Vader that isn't real, uh, and mask, mask cracks open, and, and it's his face inside. All very metaphorical. And this was similar. Uh, the dark side, like like how it showed Luke himself, uh, it showed Rey herself. The answer is herself. That she doesn't need to go looking for her parents. She doesn't need them. And I, and I love, oh my god, I love that the reveal was that her parents aren't special. Every, everybody was wondering, oh my god, like what, who are her parents? Maybe she's Luke's daughter. Maybe she's Obi-Wan's daughter. Out of everybody's expectations, everybody expected her parents to be somebody important and some big reveal, and they were just people. They were just junkers who sold her and abandoned her. And I, I love that because that's the that was the best possible direction they could have gone because nothing they tried, if they tried to do something grand, it wouldn't have lived up to anybody's expectations. So they didn't bother. Reveals that it's not important. It doesn't matter where she came from. She's not from some powerful bloodline like Luke and Kylo Ren, she's just a person. And that that brings us back to the original idea of the Force, that anybody can be powerful in it. It doesn't matter where you came from. And it, it completely uh, undermines the idea of midichlorians, uh, which I fucking hate that idea. I, I hate with a passion that, that introduction of, oh, here's a reason for the force powers that you have midichlorians in your blood so it went from anybody can be force sensitive to no you have to be one of the chosen ones you have to be one of the master race i oh i hated that so uh so yeah it, it goes back to that idea of anybody anybody and and i loved the little bit at the end with the little boy in the broom I mean, you know like he reaches out and the broom just comes to his hand and it's subtle it's that little distance of it going whoop, to his hand and you could almost miss it, but it was still blatant enough that everybody saw it, everybody recognized what was going on there. And here's this little slave boy, and he's Force-sensitive. And it brings us back to that beautiful idea that it doesn't matter who you are, it doesn't matter your background, you can be anyone and you can have that connection to the Force, and I love it. I loved Poe Dameron's uh, character arc in this, I loved how he went from being that uh, that brash into action idiot. <laughs> like, like a, lo a lot of this was the, the, uh, the new characters of Ray, Poe, and Finn being idiots and doing things wrong and screwing up. And I love that. And it, it flies in the face of the idea of, oh, these characters are Mary Sue's. No, they're not. They are definitely not. They are making mistakes. They are screwing up. They are learning from those mistakes and they are improving. And that is very important. And it, completely does away with the idea of any of them especially especially ray she is not a fucking mary sue no she's not get over it i just oh man pose whole thing of like i'm gonna jump into an x-wing and blow some shit up i am going you know the brute force my way through this and he learns that no that that's not the only way and there is another way and his whole mutiny thing was kind of crazy, but I, I loved it. I loved how he was like, nope, I know better than these veteran soldiers and these, you know, the, these, these, uh, uh, these wise old women who they knew what they were doing. <laughs> and he just assumed that they didn't. And they proved him wrong. And he made a huge mistake with that mutiny. And it, you know, finally he, like, he realizes what's going on he realizes the truth and he's he learns from that and at the end when it's like he realizes how they're, they're backed into a corner they can't brute force their way through it they have to find another way out and they escape and i i like that he went from that that crazy sort of you know just over uh over excited over eager fly boy 
to somebody who really took the time to stop and think about what he was doing. It was his journey of becoming a leader, a leader who uh, people could respect and follow. And I, lo I loved that. I especially loved the bit where it's like, you know, all right, you know, everybody follow me. And everybody turns and looks at Leia and she's like, why are you looking at me? Follow him. <laughs> that was that was the moment where she the, she handed off the torch to him. And that was brilliant. I loved it. Um, I loved Leia's scenes. I loved the bit where she was sucked out into space and she used the force to come back. I know that people are complaining about that. You know what? Fuck those people. I don't care. Uh, that was beautiful. Uh, there's an internet movie reviewer that I watch, Movie Bob, and he said it best when he said that if you, if you can use the force to move objects, you can use the force to move yourself. And if these characters live in a universe where the force can enable you to come back as a ghost after you die, then it can enable you to survive enough in, in a, the vacuum of space to get back into the ship. And, and you know what? This was Carrie Fisher's send-off, as far as I'm concerned. Because we, we don't have her anymore. So this is it. If they want to give her that moment, that, that amazing, beautiful moment, finally seeing Leia use the Force for something. Great! That was a beautiful way to do it. I loved that. And I loved that suicidal light speed jump. Wow, that was so well directed. That, that, that moment of silence. It really added the gravity to it, you know? It really gave it the weight that it needed. It really felt like that important, heavy moment. I forget the character's name, Laura Dern's character. Uh, I don't know why I forgot her name. Just how she, like, that send off for her. That was beautiful. That was such a heroic moment. I gasped. A lot of people in the audience gasped in that moment of silence. It was just like, oh, wow. You know, <laughs> I could hear other people just going, whoa. You know, it was great. I, uh, I thought that the, uh, the scene with them defending themselves in the bunker, uh, was great. Uh, the, the junky, uh, almost useless, uh, fighter things, um, uh, going up against these, you know, these Imperial walkers and that, that giant ass cannon. I, I loved that. That was great. That was just like a last ditch effort you really felt like these people were their backs were up against a wall and they had nothing and i like they were fucked and you felt it and um and then finn the, the whole finn's whole storyline it's it's flawed it's very flawed uh i'll talk about that in a minute but um but i i really liked how he tried to be you know that that suicidal hero and, and rose wouldn't let him do it and I, that was great. And I loved her line, that line about how we're not going to win by, by killing what we hate. We're going to win by protecting what we love. And I loved that. That was great. Um, I like Rose. I like Rose. Uh, she's flawed. And in ways that I don't like, um, in part, she's boring. Uh, <laughs> but I, I do have some interest in her as a character. Uh, and it's weird that uh, she's, I guess she's going to be a love interest for Finn now. Um, I wonder how that's going to play out between uh, Finn, Ray, and Rose, and Poe. I don't know if there was going to be some love triangle between Finn, Poe, and Ray, but uh, now we've got Rose, so is there going to be some sort of love trapezoid or <laughs> a love square? I don't know. Uh, I guess we'll see. And Luke's scene at, at the end the whole thing with him showing up and that scene between him and and leia mark hamill and carrie fisher back together again talking to each other and it was just that last moment and i especially loved luke saying to leia about han no one is ever truly gone and now that now that carrie fisher is dead that that line has new meaning especially him saying it to her and it really oh man that was great i love that um and then his whole thing of you know stepping out and you know all the fire comes at him and and then the dust clears and he walks out and he's like <laughs> it was great that made me chuckle it was fantastic uh i mean it was like it was silly but it was also like 
you know, obviously he was he was doing this to bait uh, Kylo Ren, and it worked because the dude is a fucking idiot. Comes out and he's you know, I'm gonna defeat the the old master, and it's like nope because I'm not even here. You know, it was a great fake out. I loved that, and but then the you know the strain of of, of holding that image across light years, it was too much for Luke and his. He, his body gave out and, and he and he died, but he did it in the Jedi way, you know, fading away, and that was and that was great, you know. Old heroes don't die; they simply fade away. I love that. Hope he comes back as a Force ghost. I really do. I don't want it to be over for him just yet. I want to see at least one more scene with him, uh, maybe guiding Ray in some way. Uh, I, I I really want that. Um, but I guess we'll see. Snoke. Uh, a lot of people are complaining that he didn't get enough uh, backstory. So? How much backstory did we get with the Emperor in the original trilogy? None. He's an evil Emperor. That's it. That's all you need to know. We got more information about Snoke than we did about the Emperor. So who gives a shit? He didn't matter. I mean, he, he mattered insofar as he was the enemy that they had to overcome. But then they overcame it. He's he's gone, and now it's it's the Kylo Ren show, it's the Ren and Ray you know show going forward. At least in in, in terms of the the part of the the story that's about uh, Jedi and Sith and so forth. That's that's it. They they are done with evil overlords. It it's not that kind of story anymore. I that's great. That's a good thing. And this is getting long. I didn't realize I was going to talk this long about it. Um, <laughs> Right, so I guess uh, that's all the wonderful things that I love about it, or at least the ones that I can uh, remember. Uh, maybe I will think of more, and maybe I'll bring it up later, I don't know. But anyway, so now I'm going to get into the flaws, the things that I didn't like. I thought the uh, the whole Canto... Canto... What was the what was the casino place? I forget. I thought it was kind of boring, really. Uh, I, I thought it was important, you know, to... Uh, have that where um, Finn is realizing through Rose that there's layers to this. That it's not just evil, ob the obviously evil and the obviously good. There's layers. Uh, and, you know, the war profiteers, the uh, and they're selling weapons and, and, uh, and so on to uh, both sides. The rich are getting richer. The poor stay poor, you know. And and I loved the the bit about the um, the creatures. I forget what they were called. The the basically you know the horse race creatures. I loved those. I loved those creatures. They were just they were so beautiful. Um, and it was tragic how they were being mistreated for this you know for this race. Um, and you've got the slave kids, you know, tending to the uh, uh, to the animals. And um, again, layers. And I loved that. But the whole scene, just it it didn't carry enough for me i didn't care uh it, it felt like padding it felt too long uh we spent too long in that place it should have been like uh, it should have been like most eisley where you know you go in you see how terrible people are you get what you need and then you leave the whole thing with the, the code breaker and trying to get to the code breaker and being captured and then escaping with this new guy it was fine you know that was that was all right i guess i just it, it just felt long it felt like it could have been trimmed down quite a bit. Um, the whole thing with Benicio del Toro was pretty good. Uh, I can't remember his name, but del Toro is always very a, a very good actor. I liked how he gave him uh, a stutter. You know, as a nice little character uh, quirk, but uh, he also kind of felt a little unnecessary. Again, it felt like padding. Um, the betrayal uh, at the end really wasn't that much of a shock because we didn't know enough about him to care. Uh, he was just some guy, you know. Um, we uh, we did get that little moment where he gives the necklace back to Rose, which I really liked that, you know. He, he kind of gave a shit, kind of, sort of. But then, betrayal because money. Uh, what? Whatever. <laughs> uh, oh, man, but I absolutely loved the scene with Finn uh, fighting Phasma. Uh, that was great. I loved it. Uh, it was a little It was a little silly in that he was nothing more than a random stormtrooper, and his amount of training shouldn't have been enough to overcome somebody who was supposedly a badass, somebody who w was, you know, apparently worthy of custom armor, shiny custom armor. Oh, it was kind of weird uh, that he bested her. 
in in that fight. It should have been. I think it should have been like a bit more one sided in her favor. Uh, but they were almost evenly matched. So, but whatever. You know, it was great. I loved it. Uh, and I especially loved the scene at the end where she's looking up at him, and you know, you can see her eye through the the hole that he uh, that he knocked in in her mask, and and she's like, you know, you're still scum, and he's like, rebel scum. Love that. That was great. Uh, I said before, Rose is boring. Uh, she's a little standard, <laughs> but I just felt she was a little one dimensional. She didn't really go through much of an arc. We didn't really learn very much about her other than she had a sister who died. I don't know. Maybe we'll maybe we'll learn more about her in the next movie. Um, I hope she goes through a character arc. I hope I hope she matters more uh, in the next movie. She didn't really feel it didn't really feel like she mattered in this. Um, in part because their plan failed, but that's fine. It's important for them to fail so that, you know, you can see them overcome that and do better in the next movie. I mentioned in the previous movie, The, the Knights of Ren, uh, and how, Ky you know, Kylo Ren and he, he led them. Well, I don't know. Was that the guards? Because if that was the guards, why didn't they have lightsabers? Why weren't they force, you know, using force powers? If they were the former students of Luke Skywalker, why weren't they doing the same things uh, that um, that Kylo Ren and Rey were doing? Uh, if if not, where are the Knights of Ren? Where are those other students? Did they die? Uh, they, they never said. Are they still out there? Maybe we'll see in the next movie. Maybe in the next movie, Kylo Ren meets up with them, and suddenly it's Rey and maybe a handful of, of new students against these, you know, seasoned, you know, veterans, but at least, at the very least, you know, more powerful force users. Man, that would be crazy, wouldn't it? I would love that. I would absolutely love to see a fight between Rey and some fledgling students that, that she has gathered against Kylo Ren and the Knights of Ren. That would be amazing. Wow, that would be fantastic. But we'll see. I'm trying to think of some other flaws. Uh, I mentioned that the comedic beats, some of them were kind of stupid. I, I like that they at least showed us that Luke Skywalker has a sense of humor now. <laughs> like, in the, in the original trilogy, I mentioned before, he went from a whiny teenager to a stoic Jedi Master over the course of the three movies. Um, and we never really saw him joke around. We never really saw him relax. And so it was really good to see Luke Skywalker, you know, be, like, kind of sarcastic and, and, uh, uh, and, and rude and silly. And I liked that. I really liked that. Uh, but some of the comedy just didn't work for me. The bit where Ray reaches out with her hand and he tickles it with the with the frond, uh, the um, the leaf, and uh, and she's all like, "I feel something." Oh, he's like, "Oh my God, it's the Force!" The, I can't believe it's this strong. It just felt wrong. It didn't work for me. I I don't know. Other comedic beats that just felt kind of tacked on and you know a little silly. Uh, when when she's like. You know, he, he's like, where are you from? And she says, nowhere. And he's, and he's like, everybody's from somewhere. And, and she goes, uh, Jakku? And he's like, yeah, no, that's that's pretty much nowhere. And that, that little joke just felt kind of dumb. Um, things like that. Uh, the Porgs, I think, were overdone. Uh, they were cute, but they were kind of dumb. Um, they, they were the Ewoks of this new trilogy. It was clearly put in there to sell toys. I guess that's it. Uh, I think that's that's about it. Uh, all that I have to say. Wow, I have recorded an hour <laughs> of of me talking about this. I'm gonna trim that down in the editing process. Hopefully, a lot, but we'll see. All right, uh, that's it for this video. Like I said, I'm not gonna make a habit of making movie reviews. I just really wanted to talk about this movie in particular. Maybe I'll make more reviews for other movies. If I see something that I really love and I want to talk about it, we'll see. I'll update again soon. Uh, probably not until after the new year because I'm going to be very busy. Uh, I'm going to be visiting family for Christmas. Or at least a uh, couple of days before Christmas because I work Christmas Eve and Christmas Day. A full day. Uh, two 15-hour days. 7 a.m. to 10 p.m. Sunday and Monday. Uh, that's, that's going to be good, but long. Uh, good because I enjoy working and I enjoy working with these people and I, I really look forward to seeing them open their presents because they're going to be so happy and I love making people happy. But man, two 15-hour days in a row. Ugh. All right, that's all. Uh, see you next time. And uh, since I'm probably not going to update until after the new year, happy holidays. Merry Christmas to those who celebrate it. 
Uh, and uh, Happy New Year. So, take care. See you next time.